Culture is considered a central nerve that guides the societal conduct, including individual behavior, norms, beliefs, and taboos. It shapes our values about what is good, right, and acceptable. Let's say the men fight in front of the chief. Uh, this is this is lack of respect. They have to find Masai shukas, maybe like depends on how many elders are in that village. They should also have to brew a local beer, big beans, like 200 liters, 200 liters each. In the old in days, culture was passed on from generation to generation by socialization process. <laughs> In many of the African communities, the elders were the custodians of the societal traditions. The child would grow into and within the cultural heritage of his people. He would observe and mimic the actions of his elders and siblings. <laughs> Mm. As Pokot, we live as like a community. For example, we do not have nuclear families, we live as extended families. So that family, you have your grandma, your grandpa, your father, and mostly the families, the marriages are polygamous. So we stay in a homestead like all of us. So girls, they are taught by their mothers and their grandmas. So your shoulders are your roles. This is how you should be behaving as a girl. This is what you should be doing. Yeah, so roles are differentiated. Boys are taught by grand, grandpas and their dads, and girls are taught by mothers and grandmothers. By watching the ceremonies, religious services, rituals, festivals, funerals, and witnessing the coronation of kings or chiefs, he became law-abiding woven around societal beliefs. This means the child in a traditional African society cannot escape his cultural and physical environment. He is likely to become infused with the culture of that society. We practiced, uh, we practiced our rituals and customs. So that helped us to maintain our culture. Up to today, when a child is born, this child, there is a ceremony that the child will go through. And this is the, this is the, the rite that is done. We shall have a list of around four or five people, or even six. And we shall start proposing to the child from priority one, the person whom you think uh, deserves to be the namesake. The name of the person will be called four times. And while, do it, while calling the name, the child will be given the breast. The mother will be given the breast. And if the child accepts to suckle the, 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 during the first breath, if the child accepts to, to suckle the breast, people celebrate. Now the person, the name goes to that person who has been proposed. To understand how culture has become the way of life, my crew and I embarked on a wild venture to trace the remaining root traits of the Nilotic tribes in northern Kenya. 
Samuel Kiplagant will be our man behind the wheels. I'm more focused on the northern side of Kenya. Uh, currently, I have a team of students who are interns here in Kenya. And uh, we've, been, we've been into West Pokot with them and they were very happy and they were like, this is the destination that we need to be. And our first stopover was in a remote village of the Pokot people. It's so refreshing waking up in this kind of ambience, just listening to the birds singing in the wilderness. And today you're focusing on the customs surrounding the kettle rearing among the Pokot community. So utajua aje zenye kama jioni kirudia zingine zimepotea? Tunaangalia ngozi. Baba analeta ngombe kwa boma. Lakini sasa mama ni custodian. Yaani wewe ujue ngombe wako wako namna gani, wanapata chumvi namna gani, malisho iko namna gani. Tangu kitambo we were told that uh, una approach ngombe from the right. Sasa vile tulielezo ni kwamba ile mguu ya left ni kama it's, it's, it's lighter than the, the right one. So ni kama ukiendea left ni rais ngombe ifanye nini? Iku kick. So it's safer to come from the right. The Pukot culture respects, eh? respects women. And if a woman is married and then uh, she can't bear children, the husband is advised to marry a second wife. The first wife is approached. And then uh, she's asked and if she is uh, comfortable with the situation. Yeah, then uh, if... Uh, she says she's not comfortable, she would like to have children for this man. Then now she's told to look for another lady who can be married to, to this man. And so she goes, in a, she accompanies the, the people for negotiation, then the wife is brought. As one of the tribes of the Kalenjins, Pukuts do share some dominant traits in their belief systems. Besides, there are values that mark them out from other people. For instance, a Pokot married woman dressed in several strands of beaded necklaces and metallic earrings, which denotes her status and number of children. While the main ceremonies among the Pokot, like cleansing of the newborn infants and their mothers, male and female institution, marriage, sapana, harvesting, and healing ceremonies mark transitions in the social life of the individuals. If today, by bad luck, I showed your brother, there is what you call lapai. And lapai is just being done amicably today. What does it involve? If 
a boy who has never married or a girl who has been killed, has never been married, we call him or her Mokulkpes. That is a person who has never even said anything. That is, according to Lapai, 120 cows. That paid as a fine. Yes. If a person of middle-aged 40, that is 60 cows. If just an old man, 40 cows. And who contributes these cows? Is it that family? The community. The clan of, the, the clan of that? The Agust. And that has been done in decades and decades and decades of years. As the sun descends in the shadows of the hills to bury its golden rays and allows the moon to rule over the souls of the darkness, another unique Pokot ritual begins, the naming ceremony of a saint by elders. <laughs> So Selina Chepto uh, was part of, should I say a delegation or part of the team that was overseeing this process, the naming process, in that is adheres to the Pokot customs. And she'll be taking me through what was happening because I couldn't understand. I was just getting a few words during the incantation and the naming process. Selina, yes. I presume you went through the process yes. and your children have gone through the process of naming. Same. According to the customs of the Pokot, yes. wh how, what are these stages before a baby is named? So a baby is named immediately after birth. And uh, after birth, we have events. So a child is named after events. <laughs> like my name example, Chekto. The visitors came and among them was my grandfather who gave birth to my mom. So I was named after my grandfather Chipto when he came home. So immediately after he arrived, I was given birth. Mm -hmm. So in our culture, when a child is being born and that name not suited to him or her, there is a process like the one we saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So who names this child? Who has uh, the right to name the child? We have, we have the elders, like the, the woman you saw, she, she just comes, she performs the ritual, and the ritual just gives the name. So in that process, uh, the child most of the time cries. She cries or he cries, he cannot give time the mother or the father, and then they have now to seek assistance from the elders, especially the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the names are cited, are cited over, over. offer and offer from the generation. So we have only one name that comes when they call the name. It is suited to the name of the child as per the culture. Mm -hmm. Either a grandmother, she's a girl child. Uh, the, the, is, she's named after the mother or the aunts or the grandmother. If he's a boy, he's named after the fathers, the grandfathers and the they, they are the, the rest of the angles mm -hmm. who passed on. So the names are tracked back to the ancestors. Yeah, it is not just a name that you just pick from around. Oh, darling, I'm gonna
So we are almost done skinning our bull and uh, the next part is the morans the morans drinking of the raw blood Mzo ulikuwa unasema hii damu ina mnakunywa vile hivyo bila hata kupika Wakati ngombe ime amelala amekufa sasa tayari imekuwa nyama lakini damu ile iko ndani ndio tunakunywa ikiwa ikiwa katumba yake hata sitoa damu na kuweka kwa moto karanga tunakunywa ikiwa hivyo akumalisha ile desturi ya pokote tangu samani watu walikuwa wanakunywa damu bila kukaranga sasa hii watu ukipata wanakaranga damu na ukiuliza kwa nini mnakaranga damu anasema tutaki damu ile mpichi mtuko lakini sasa ile damu hii ni hii ngombe kila kipande kipande na inachomo alafu wazee wanakarao wakikarao wanakatakata na kupea wakule confirm the fact that there can't be no people without a culture. As we wrap up the day, Tamara Patience was busy compiling the unique sceneries found in the north. And here is her report under the travel guide. This week on Travel Guide, we tour the Rift Valley region, specifically the West Pokot County. For many years, people have exploited the white sandy beaches off the coast, but now the Great Rift is opening up opportunities due to good road and air connectivity, mushrooming, posh hotels, and traditional bombers. Today, we focus on a new style of lodges coming up in the northern part of Kenya, and in this case, the Pokot Bomber Lodge. The design of the lodge is a replica of the traditional Pokot Bomber, and this is how to access it. Through public transport, you can board a matatu at Nairobi town for a 6 to 7 hours drive direct to Kapenguria, then proceed to explore the wonders of Pokot. You could also opt for a 6 to 7 hours self-drive to the destination at hand. By air, a flight from Wilson Airport, approximately an hour or an hour and a half to Kitale town would do you good, then board a matatu to Kapenguria ready for exploration. Toast in the wilderness, the bomber offers a unique, refreshing atmosphere in the wild. The best thing uh, which people like most is just swimming. Uh, uh, then the food, the choma that is within the place. We are targeting different. Not we are not even targeting one, one, one mini class of plan. 
yeah but all the clients yeah because here yeah, in swimming we we only not within this county but even to other counties yeah what wanna talk about Bali what wanna talk about Busia what wanna talk about Eldoret what wanna talk in one top top code bomb what wanna talk about Uganda wanna kuja hapa kuna vitu mingi sana hapa wespo code in investors wanaweza fanya kuna pia like business biashara kama ukulima pia iko hapa kubwa sana kuna pia biashara kama is kwa ukulima pia tuna include livestock ndio kiangalia sana hapa westport wanyama wengi sana zenye wanyama yenye inatumika yani ile zinachinjwa Kenya hizi zinatoka hapa mind pia zinatoka hapa advantage hii boma kwa community is like kwa community aswa vijana first vijana wengi hapa umeemployiwa source of employment tumeemploy watu wengi sana tukianza na mafundi staff yani imekuwa to source of uh, source of employment second thing pia uh, vijana wale like most of the time vijana wengi hapa ama pia wazazi pia hapa imekuwa to ni place ime keep watu busy most of the community wako there wanalisha wanyama mbuzi hizo for the first time is to this place for you to have a wonderful experience and exploration of a wide range of scenery then you should add this to your to-do list plan to visit Saiwa Swamp and National Park which is a sanctuary for two rare species the semi-aquatic sitatunga antelope and the debrazes monkey your second stop can be at the Nasolot Natural Reserve and further exploration to Kapigwe Museum and Trangani Hills among many other beautiful destinations. The climate is tropical, dry and wet. Average annual temperatures ranging between highs of 25 degrees to lows of approximately 12 degrees. Therefore, your parking list will vary depending on the month of your visit. Beginning of the year January through to May, make light clothing your best friend while visiting West Pokot and also invest in a hat, swimming gear, sunscreen and shades to shelter your eyes from the scorching sun. July through December is a mixture of cold, wet and windy. Therefore, your packing list should not miss Ashuka or light sweaters and jackets as you're on tour. You wouldn't want your luggage to be just one huge coat or jacket. With a budget of as low as 40,000 Kenyan shillings per person, you can travel to West Pokot County and explore the adventures in that region for three days and enjoy the luxuries that it has to offer. Add West Pokot to your travel itinerary this year. For Travel Guide, I'm Tamara Patience. <laughs>